नमस्कार हम अशोक व्यास समटाइम यू फील दैट यू हैव फाउंड द गोल्ड माइन एंड दैट गोल्ड माइन इज भगवत गीता बट हाउ टू हैव एक्सेस टू इट वी नीड समवन हु हैज फाउंड हिज कॉलिंग एंड रेजोनेंस विद दिस डिवाइन सेलेस्टियल सॉन्ग व्हिच वी रेफर टू एज भगवत गीता एंड इन द सीरीज गाइडेड बाय गीता I have the pleasure of welcoming uh, Dr. Atul Chauksi ji again. Dr. Sir, Namaskar. And, Namaskar. Um, so last time while we were discussing, we were talking about me and mine, and you were uh, referring to uh, the all-pervading consciousness. Uh, you probably uh, quoted a shloka from uh, seventh chapter. Please uh, continue that uh, chain of thought. So. so we have to separate out atman and anatman the seven components that is a uh, uh, these eight components we, we is is uh, are responsible for the creation of the whole universe the physical universe and our body is part of the physical universe our body mind intellect they are subtle but they belong to prakriti or uh, Uh, as a, as a, or or inferior power of god the superior power of god is atman and 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 we are functioning mind intellect will only function till that uh, atman is supplying the power so atman and anatman we have to separate it out and once we know that we the other things which affects the mind intellect and body you will have a distance between the uh, mind intellect and body and your true consciousness your soul so you became separate there so 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 you you will be fearless joyous because all these problems comes because of mind so mind is in between soul and and the world so the world the as uh, a sensory input is processed by the mind and mind the diseases of mind or mind disturbances we we assume it as our as our own so so we have to separate out that mind and you cannot train mind mind is very agile so but but you can understand mind and once you understand mind that is a bhagwan raman maharshi was do, doing that you know he, he his focus was only on on the mind who am i who am i so so you keep asking question who am i who am i and then the answer was i am not this b am i i am not this body mind and intellect who am i who am i he am i he am i i am not this b am i you you mm-hmm. keep chanting this and repeating then as time will come when you will realize that truth that you are brahman and you are not this body mind and intellect so why should you borrow the headaches of mind as your own so there is in astvakra gita there is very nice shloka sukham dukham dharma dharmo sukham dukham manasani na te vibho na karta asi na bhokta asi mukte va asi sarvada that is uh, 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 sage astvakra tells uh, the king janaka who was a very spiritually um, enriched and a spiritual giant so he tells him that you are not this dharma dharma you are not this sukha dukha dharma dharmo sukham dukham manasani na te vibho that belongs to your mind not to your soul manasani na te vibho na karta si na bhokta si mukte va si sarvada you are not the doer you are not the enjoyer you are a free uh, consciousness so so once you know this the, the you won't get crazy by uh, the happy happenings you won't get sad by disasters you will be even so that okay, is so let, yeah so what what you are saying partly it is making sense uh, let's say to me and to some of us who are listening to you but partly we feel that how to uh to to apply this or because even while we listen to these call it concept ideas or words of those who have realized it we feel that 
it is okay for him but i am suffering from this so i have xyz needs and i need to address it so when i overcome it then probably i'll try to understand what dr atul chokshi is saying so talk to me how someone who is facing some acute problems would find the message of bhagavad gita relevant for him or her uh, to deal with uh, i mean we are not getting into specifics but each one is uh, one which you said is a error uh, we consider ourselves as body mind and intellect so as long as that is there then how gita is relevant i'm, I'm, I'm talking with a with little bit of confusion because when you say you are not this mind but i am operating from mind i am talking to you with mind or whatever experiences are coming my way i am absorbing that them through the inner percept perception of mind yes so 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 the mind mind is very uh, all the problems are because of mind so so uh, if the mind is quiet you say i am happy if, uh, if mind is serene you are happy if mind is disturbed you say i am disturbed no so man eva manushyanam karanam bandha moksha yo all troubles are because of mind so so we we have to understand what is mind you cannot train mind arjuna was asking the lord the same question the lord with his mind is so so, so restless and so uh, so fragile, fragile it goes from place to place and uh, i cannot control it so that that's when god uh, there's uh, there's a beautiful shloka everything goes god has given every answer we can have only thing we need time and we need patience and we need faith and we have to put it to practice so so mind can we have to find, when you inquire what is mind what is mind a stage will come there is nothing like mind there is no nothing like mind mind is just the series of thoughts as in upadesha which is written by bhagwan raman marsi this thing is beautifully explained that's my another uh, scripture that i love so manasam tukim margane krute neva manasam marge arjavat when inquiring manasam tukim what is mind manasam tukim margane krute on this path of inquiry neva manasam there is no nothing like mind marge arjava this is a straight forward path it's a straight forward path it's not a difficult uh, crooked path so uh, 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 we 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 have to try mind is only series of thoughts vrutyastu ham vrittim asrita means it is a thought but that thought is related to aham vrutti means i see this cell phone cell phone is an object i see it if there is no i is is this this is just uh, nothing to me so that i consciousness makes me aware about it so so the mind is a uh, is makes you aware about these things so, so these are vrutis and the out of this vrutti it is called aham vrutti means me idam vrutti means this this is phone this is mercedes so though that is idam aham but aham remains same idam keeps changing like a cinema screen so it is made up of two things so when when i identify that uh, this object is not me this is my hand so i can say that i am not hand this is my intellect which is fading away so i can watch it so i am not intellect whatever we can say this you are not that so you are pure consciousness which is experiencing all these thing so so aham that i vrutti is the one which is mind so mind so is I, really yeah, I, it is I, really I, your consciousness 
And when you focus on I, then then he, he tells further that when you focus on this, aham ayam kuto bhavati chinvata aipatita aham nijavicharanam. When you inquire, what is this aham? Who is the one who's noticed that this is cell phone? If you keep inquiring this, you will end up in a place where there is only consciousness and there is no ego. That ego, as a, I see that I am intelligent. I establish this factory. That I, shouting I, that is an ego. When you inquire into it, this ego will fade away and die down. You are left with pure consciousness. So you are left with pure consciousness. And I think that is the experience of Dr. Atul Chok Siji. And um, of course, there have been many saints who have attained this. And uh, what they assure us is that each one of us is capable of attaining it and be as happy as we can be. Or uh, Our true nature is actually happiness is what we hear through scriptures and through saints. Now, uh, I'm coming back to where you mentioned about controlling mind. And uh, when Lord Krishna told Arjun in response to his query that controlling of mind is as difficult as if trying to hold the wind in your palm and and then he gave some practical suggestions which which is also very nice. that, yeah yes, that, so, so arjuna says chanchalam hi mana krishna pramathi balavata dradam tasya nigra aham manne vayori vase duskuram so bhagwan says yeah then he gives answer asansayam mahabahu no doubt arjuna asansayam mahabahu Mano du nigraham chalam abhyasen tu kontiya veragen cha gruhete. Two things are needed. Practice, abhyas, constant practice. And veragya means dispassion. If you have these two things, your mind will become your servant. And you want your mind to be the servant. As a servant, it is the best. As a boss, it is the worst thing. It can drive you nuts. It can, it can tell Ratu Choksi, let's go to Atlantic City. I, I, I feel like going there. And it can drive you nuts day and night. But as a servant, I say, no, nobody, I don't want to do that. I want to do something else. So my, my mind becomes servant. You talk to your mind. So abhyas means practice. Vairagya means dispassion. At the moment, we have a raga. We have an attachment. We have an attraction to worldly things. And that is what is messing us. And senses and mind, they naturally run like a water runs at the lower level towards the world. So we become worldly people. When that same power, if you divert it towards the uh, towards your soul, you become godly. From worldly, you become godly. If you are worldly, enjoying and and, and the, the, the various things that is available in the world or wanting to enjoy. You are a bhogi. When you are focusing on the inner soul, you are a yogi. So you have to decide what do you want to be, bhogi or yogi. Bhogi becomes a rogi ultimately and yogi becomes uh, the united with God ultimately. So these two choices are very simple. Where is your inclination? If your inclination is towards the world, you become worldly. When your inclination is towards the God, you become godly. And there is an advantage of uh, each path. The things worldly, you have experienced yourself as a 50, 60 years, we, we were happy, sad, happy, sad, and still not satiety. There is no satisfaction. Still, we have a agenda. <laughs> I want this, I want this, as I want to see my grandson, and so and so. So, so the complete satisfaction and the state of not wanting anything comes only through spiritual path. So again, uh, staying with that abhyas and vairagya that you mentioned in the context of the solution-oriented sharing from uh, Lord Krishna, um, share with us what is the meaning of abhyas or practice as is referred here? And then we will come to vairagya also. But what, abhyas, what is the... abhyas means studying. Studying that I am studying Gita or, 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 or some principle or some 
thing that I want to learn. So practice. If, if you want to play cricket, you have to do the, uh, the obvious. You have to go and play cricket every day. You become a best cricketer. If you do gambling every day, you become a best gambler. So, so if you study the scripture every day and go in depth of that, you become a yogi. Wherever you put your mind, you will get it. But we put mind in the wrong places, thinking that there is happiness. See, so we thought that the money will bring me happiness. And to make that money, I want to select the best field that can make money. So oh, I, I, I become an engineer, I will make more money. I become a doctor. I will, and if those fields go down, I, I will go to become a businessman. But, but the, my intention was to become happy. And I thought that the money will bring happiness. And money never brings happiness to anyone. It can bring few comforts, but it cannot bring you peace of mind or uh, uh, eternal happiness. It can, it can put you in a Mercedes, but, but still you can be disturbed and agitated in your mind with, with a thousand problems. So money so, is not a solution. So money is not a solution and the solution is contemplation on consistent basis in the with the right orientation because if if you keep um, <laughs> uh, highlighting something or you have your stairs placed towards the wrong side then you will climb but you will reach to a wrong destination yes. so how association with saints or as you were mentioning the first time you read a book by one swamiji on bhagavad gita you were also referring to the original text. How the commentaries or listening uh, helps? Yes. So I have read commentaries on Bhagavad Gita from at least 25, 30 big saints and prophets. So, so that these masters, they have spent their life on these teachings and made it simple for us. And this is available so going and studying this thing is your abhyasa. So that brings more and more clarity. And this path, on the spiritual path, God gives a guarantee that you, the only thing you have to decide to walk on that. We don't even decide. We decide to do thousand other things, but we don't decide to do. So spiritual thing is the last thing people think that 60s, 70s, when my problems are solved, maybe I will sit down and do. No, no, you, you have missed the train. You have finished. Your, your journey, sojourn on uh, this planet was useless. So, so uh, you, you have to use the time in the right way for the right understanding. And if you focus there, you will get there. So right understanding uh, keeps on uh, evading us. We right understanding it. comes from scriptures. That's why God says, Tasmat Sastra Pramanam, everything God has said, nothing he has left uh, unsaid. No? So, Ya Sastra Vidim Gutsuruja, means if you do uh, contrary to what is said, said in scripture, you will be in a mess. So then he says, Tasmat Sastra Pramanam Te Karya Karyo Vavastito Gnatva Sastra Vidham Uptam Karma Kartum Arasi Therefore, Arjuna, follow the scriptures as your guidelines, not anything, any whims that comes to you. So only scriptures. And Guru is the one who has studied the scriptures. So he can be a guidance. Book can be your Guru. Guru who is very learned and has spent there are hundreds and thousands of people who have given, uh, our acharyas have spent a whole life and given so many books. Everything is in black and white. No? Only thing, we do not focus on that. We do not read. We don't want to go. And the other thing, money is, is dragging you away from the scriptures. So this is becomes the last priority. And that's why you are left. Uh, as a, even if you have money, then you, you also, you are sad. Right, your your child gets sick, or your wife 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 runs away, or something happens. You are in a mess. So money is useless then. So basically, uh, I'll uh, sort of take a detour to what you just referred to 
if something which is unfavorable happens most of the time as we see many times devotion or going to uh, to saints or temples also becomes a means for people to pray for uh, fulfillment of xyz desires which are pressing desires at that point of time and uh, you, with empathy if you want to address this sort of uh, situation which is also encouraged by sometimes people who who are um, who we refer to as saints some some saints also encourage that you do this and and many people go to astrologers etc so not getting into the too <laughs> too much detail of this but your response to um re approaching god for fulfillment of desire how do you uh, look at it and if i use the term sakam nishkam bhakta etc he said three types of bhaktas are there yeah, yeah. see the, the the greatest enemy is desire <laughs> so that's why god says vasna praksayo moksha means annihilation of these desires is liberation so arjuna asked lord krishna that athakin prayokto em papam jarati purusha anichchanna pi varsheni baladi vanyojita god what is that we get into this mess and spend 40 40 50 100 years and get no get nowhere then god gives answer in one point the god says kam esh krodh esh rajo gun samudbhavam mahasano maha papam vidhyenam hi varinam arjuna it is your desire kam esh means desire krodh esh anger when the desire is obstructed you become angry if i desire to get something if i don't get it i become angry angry on the situation or on a person who is obstructing the desire so kam esh krodh esh these are the product of rajo guna which is activity action as america is full of rajo guna no as a kam esh krodh rajo guna mahasano it has a great appetite you will never be done with it you will you will always have new desire spending and uh, and you are running after that so the kam esh krodh esh rajo guna samudbhavam mahasano maha papam vidhi enam hi varinam no it to be your greatest enemy once you know this you will work on it we um <laughs> so, so you, 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 you don't you don't go and god tell god oh god give me give me success in my business or or get, get me this house or get me this visa you don't go like a beggar no then how will you go dr atul ji you are good in saying what you are saying but many i i would say 80% or 90% people will not agree with you <laughs> they they want to approach god let let's say sincerely speaking sometimes you go to mother for something and they say that god is mother and father and everything so if i don't go to god then who will i go but again no, then you can go to god is god god do, as god says that no there are four kinds of uh, bhaktas chaturvida bhajante maam four kinds of people chaturvida bhajante maam jana sukruti no arjuna these are all good people bad people will not go to god so these are sukruti no means good doers chaturvida bhajante maam jana sukruti no arjuna artho the one who is in difficulty jignasu one who wants to know what god is artharthi means he wants money artharthi and the a fourth one who has understood god and he wants to pursue that journey so these four kinds of people come to me and god will satisfy each one of them so so there is nothing wrong in going to god but we have to know that this is this is asking a 100 dollar bill from god no i mean what are you asking no so yeah so having the right understanding helps you in uh, figuring out what is the right thing to ask or uh, if you are getting eternal happiness then should you settle for temporal happiness or if you are getting fulfillment which is uh, going to stay forever is that a better stage or getting 
maybe a house or having a need fulfilled of buying a mercedes or whatever it is so mm-hmm. for now in this session as we move towards the concluding part of our conversation i want your input on understanding attachment and detachment abhyas and vairagya was the other term used by uh, bhagwan in uh, helping with control of mind so how how that comes about uh, because we find attachment is natural outcome of our love for family members or uh, the way we understand our relationship with respect to other uh, segments of society attachment uh, and ego also go together so over to you yeah attachment means dependence love is separate attachment is separate when i'm dependent on something as a, that, that that is that, that is called attached if i if i demand something from someone or expect something from someone i'm attached to that thing or person so god doesn't want that attachment you can have profound love and uh, service towards your wife or your children or your friends but but you are not seeking anything from them when you are seeking something from them you are attached because you have a demand and if that demand is not fulfilled you will be sad so so if god doesn't want you to be attached you got pure love just giving and finished so 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 that is a, that is a tasmat asakta means asakta means unattached tasmat asakta satatam karya karma samachar asakto vacharan karma parmatma hoti purusha you do the work because you ought to do that even if it is your child or wife or a, a household you are treating them as children of god and you are providing your services to them without expecting anything if you are expecting then you are attached then you are attached to your wife and god forbid something happens to your wife you are you, you are a mess you so don't get into the mess is the key word where i would conclude for this uh, session but i find it very important to learn about the secret of work and how bhagavad gita when we hear about karma yoga what does it mean so in the next session i would request uh, uh, dr choksi ji to talk about the secret of work and once again as i express my gratefulness to him for joining us uh, with thanks to him and thanks to all of you for being a part of this meaningful an enlightening conversation uh, this is ashok vyas namaste